What's going on friends? I had a lot of viewer requests to do a video over the Harley Davidson shovel head. Now the shovel head engine, I really don't feel like got a fair shake. And then it's rep bad reputation that it gained back in the 1970s. Maybe it wasn't completely all that engine's fault. The shovel head engine is one of Harley Davidson's most iconic motors. And just like all the other Harley engines, it did have its fair share of issues. But a lot of these issues really didn't come up until the 1970s. And we're gonna talk about that today and kind of go over the AMF situation and some other issues that were going on with the shovel head that were kind of out of their control, but they were limited by AMF. And it was just a bad time in Harley Davidson history all around. This engine ushered in several innovations for Harley-Davidson that carried over into the Evo and then even carried on into the twin cam. This engine had an 18 year run, which is one of the longest runs in Harley-Davidson history. But just like any other Harley-Davidson engine, it did have its little quirks and issues. But some of those issues may not have been completely the engine's fault. And we're gonna take a look at that today. But before we get into all that, please don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the shovel head, let's get you caught up real quick. In 1966, Harley-Davidson took their panhead engine and basically added a set of modified alloy Sportster heads and raised the compression on an otherwise basically a panhead engine. With the modified Sportster heads on top of the original panhead engine, these heads became known as the power pack heads because they were good for a 10 horsepower gain over the stock pan head. Now, 10 horsepower, that was a lot back in 1966, especially when the bikes were getting heavier with rear suspension, electric start, things that we really take for granted today. Now, unlike on the pan head engine, the pan shaped valve cover you see, that's what it was, it was a valve cover. Now, the shovel shape that you see on the shovel head engine, that is the actual cylinder head. And those little buttons that you see on the side of it, those were actually rocker arm pivots that were cast into the head itself. Now the shovel head engine really wasn't that much different than the pan head, other than the new set of cylinder heads, Harley carried over the same bottom end, the same cast iron cylinders, and they also, between 1966 and 1969, Harley Davidson kept the old school generator and distributor on the bike. Now 1970 saw the upgrade from the generator to an actual alternator and that old school distributor disappeared behind the, the, new time, the newly engineered timing cover and thus basically the cone motor was born. Now as I mentioned, the shovel head wasn't exactly a perfect engine just like any other Harley Davidson engine. It did have its share of issues. But these issues really didn't become a major problem until the 1970s, which we're gonna get into that in a minute. But some of the issues that the shovel head had were obviously heat, having cast iron cylinders and that alloy head, and raising the compression to get more power, well, that kind of exacerbated the issue. Another issue that the shovel head had was oil circulation. Oil would tend to pool in the top of the heads, and the oil would kind of work its way past the valve seats, get into the engine, into the combustion chamber, it would burn the oil, and you got a real nice little smoke show out of the back. Another issue with the pan head was wet sumping. Oil would basically collect in the crankcase and it wouldn't be scavenged quickly enough. And this would actually cause the oil to be squeezed between the crankshaft and the cases. And what this would do is this would slow down the speed of the crankshaft turning and it would basically cause power loss and obviously increased heat when you've got oil down in the crankcase just getting beat to death by the crankshaft. It was a known issue, but like I say, it didn't happen to every single motor. Now this is where the trouble began for the shovel head. Yes, AMF was a huge factor in it, but there was also some other economic factors going on in the world in that time period that contributed to the shovel head getting this horrible reputation. Now by 1974, America is in this gigantic fuel crisis, and this is where the problems really started to begin for the shovel head. The fuel, of course, the quality of the fuel and the octane in the fuel basically collapsed, and this was very detrimental to the shovel head. Now to make matters even worse at this time, the US decided that lead and gasoline was bad and it was causing too many emissions. So they started reducing the amount of lead and gasoline leading up to unleaded fuel. And this caused some major issues for the shovel head as well. It is at this point in time 
where the shovel head's solid reputation of being this reliable workhorse of a motor is really starting to take a hard beating. Power faded, cylinders overheated, and then they're also starting to lean these bikes out at that time, which is basically starting to contribute to the overheating. It's cooking the gaskets in these motors, and that's where we get the famous Harley oil leak stories from. So why didn't they fix it? Why didn't they do something about it? Well, AMF didn't want to put any money into it, number one, but AMF had a solution for all this. Let's just increase production and keep cranking out these motorcycles. So AMF starts churning out these motorcycles up in production. These motors are knocking. The fit and finish has gone to crap. Quality control is pretty much obsolete within the factory because honestly, AMF just didn't give a crap. And with the parent company not caring, AMF's blaming it on Harley Davidson's workers, which I could kind of see that. You've got crappy leadership at the top. It kind of runs downhill. And if you're working on the line, you wouldn't really give a crap either. So quality suffered, and this is where we start getting its bad reputation. So it just went from bad to worse. Really at this time, the only thing that Harley Davidson had going for it was they had Willie G. Davidson in the design department, and he was able to create some very unique designs that we still see today. Of course, engineering knew that they needed a new engine, but AMF basically refused to give them a new engine. So in 1978, a new version of the shovel head was introduced. So, but spoiler alert, 1984, you guys know what happened. But in 1978, the 74 cubic inch shovel head grew to 80 inches. This was basically just a bored out version of the 74 inch shovel head, but it had lighter pistons, a new head design, an electronic ignition, higher compression, and redesigned intake manifolds. Now, while this combination didn't create any more power than the 74 cubic inch version, it did make that power more usable, and the bike ran much better on the new unleaded fuel and the leaner fuel ratios that they were having to deal with at that time. So basically what we saw in the 1970s was an engine that was designed pre-1966, but was updated in 1966, and with some of the changes in fuel and emission standards in the 1970s, coupled with AMF running things, you can really see how things went downhill for the shovel head. Now, even with that tarnished reputation that it got in the 1970s during the AMF years, the shovel head really is a desirable engine today, and they can be a very reliable motor to ride every day, or hell, even go cross country with it if you want to. And if you're interested in purchasing a bike with a shovel head engine in it, I would highly recommend though that you are willing and able to do your own work on the bike, or you know a good independent shop with somebody there that's familiar with them and they're willing to work on them. Because these days, if you're somebody that does your work through the dealership, a lot of dealerships won't work on anything over 10 years old. And these being older motorcycles, the dealers don't really wanna mess with them because normally on an older bike, if they go in and fix one thing, something else breaks, and nine times out of 10, customers come back blaming them for the other failure in one shape or form from another. So just take that into consideration if you're interested in purchasing a bike that is powered by a shovel head engine. Now the price on shovel heads is really starting to go up today because like I said, it is a very desirable engine today. And of course the ones from the 60s are gonna be really high, but even bikes from the 70s and 80s are starting to increase in price, especially if they're nice and they've been gone through real well. If you've got some pretty deep pockets, you can even buy a new shovel head engine today. Well, it's a clone but it's got some of the more modern features and engineering put into it. And it's also 95 cubic inch, plus you get a two year warranty on it. But like I said, you better have some deep pockets because just that engine alone is not cheap. Now shovel heads today, they do run really well when you're using quality fuel, good tuning, and you keep up on the maintenance with these bikes. And I'm sure a lot of our viewers out there that ride shovel heads, they'll back me up on this. Because, I mean, they stand by their shovel heads and they believe in them. And I believe in them as well because, like I said, good maintenance, good fuel. These bikes will turn a lot of miles with the best of anything out there. That's all I have for you this week, guys. Please don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I really hope this helps shed a little light on the shovel head and kind of why it got that bad reputation and why the engine really didn't get quite a fair shake because... Like I said, there's plenty of shovel heads out there today that have been gone through, rebuilt, corrected some of the little problems that they had back in the day with them, 
And like I say, quality fuel, good tuning. They are very reliable and good running engines even today. I want to thank everyone for watching. Ride safe, be safe out there, dodge those cars, and I will catch you guys in next week's video. Thanks for watching.